This is the third session of Building Resilient Humans, and I just want to thank everyone who registered and who has been present on the Zoom calls across the United States. It's been a lot of fun for me to see where everyone is from and um, all of the interest in all the interest in resiliency building, mostly from school nurses, but we have uh, other professions included, counselors, um, healthcare providers. It's just been a delight, so thank you. Uh, it's not very often that us nurses really get accolades for all the little things that we do, and so it, what it feels like to me to have so many interested and engaging me in this movement of resiliency building that's attached to trauma sensitive care is that I feel like you guys are kind of patting me on the back and so I have gratitude for that. Thank you for being here today. My name is Wendy de Graffenried and I've been a nurse for 15 years, 13 of that in school nursing and two for school nursing and psychiatric nursing. Psychiatric nursing actually is what drew me to uh, become a nurse, knowing that I could help people who had a um, difficult time mentally and emotionally, and so that's what really attracts me to this practice. I have been at one middle school, grades six through eight, for 13 years, and I'm diving into something new next year and becoming a homeschool nurse uh, here in our public school system in Matsu Valley, Alaska, and I'm uh, excited about that new uh, challenge. I've done some type of resiliency building for over 20 years, and it's um, it includes things like mindfulness, energy psychology, positive psychology, uh, writing of any sort, and I've pretty much conglomerated that all together and created my own practice. And what I found in my school nurse's office over the years is that the kids lacked emotional intelligence. They lacked the ability to understand what was going on in their body and their mind in order to tell me how they're feeling. And so I've broken down a practice that we'll be reviewing called emotional flossing or M-flow or emo flow for short. So I'm delighted to share that with you because it's something that I see can go global, not just national like it is now, but global as a simple daily emotional hygiene practice. And some of you have been with me since session one and any feedback that you can give either in the comments or in the post-conference follow-up eval, which you should have received as an attachment to your email that I sent out yesterday. Your feedback is highly valued as I move forward and expand on what my understanding of emotional intelligence is and where the movement needs to go in our schools as counselors in our own personal communities and then on to the nation and to the world hence the name building resilient humans because it's not just about building resilient teens or building resilient adults. It truly is about transforming uh, us as human beings so that we can better adapt to our total experience. So that's Nurse Wendy in a nutshell. Thank you for being here today. So building resilient humans actually started as um, something small but turned into something bigger. As I started looking at what really am I trying to do on a larger scale with resiliency building and what my experiences through um, different types of resiliency building 
over the last 20 years, I realized that most of what we need to learn is to embrace and acknowledge what we're experiences, experiencing as human beings and not discrediting it, not ignoring it, not judging it, but just acknowledging it and embracing it and doing our best to um, come to an understanding of how emotions affect us in the body. And so building resilient humans is part of what I call breathe. And it's a complete um, movement and course that is in the process of being created. So building resilient humans is much smaller and it stands for building resilient resiliency by embracing and acknowledging the total human experience. So welcome and thank you for being here today. We'll begin by learning just the four simple steps of emotional flossing by doing a before check-in, do a strategy, and then do an after check-in, and then repeat as needed. Something so easy that we can teach uh, children of all ages and adults of all ages how to check in with their bodies and do something about it because we're not really taught to do that. We're not really taught to identify the emotion and what we can do about it. We, parents do that, but there isn't a system like we have for dental hygiene of brushing our teeth in the morning and at night or after we eat and flossing a couple times a day and going to the dentist every six months. We just don't have that. And so this is a, an effort to change that. We'll come back to this slide here in a moment. Today, we're mostly going to uh, review um, the basic building blocks, and then I want to spend the majority of the time on reviewing all of the resiliency building strategies that I've introduced to you, which would be four, two from the first session, two from the second session, and then two more today. So I hope to get through all of that so that um, those who either registered for this class and didn't get a chance to join us can actually uh, watch this video uh, once it's posted on YouTube and uh, gain an understanding and add some tool resiliency building tools to their toolbox. So the basic building blocks of resiliency building is really just to understand what's going on inside the body. And that starts with what I call ESP. It's a check-in and we use a SUD scale, a subjective units of distress scale, zero out of 10 nurses. We know that as a pain scale or in some arenas, a comfort or a discomfort scale. So as we look at our emotions, emotions, we have to understand that pain comes with emotions. It comes with our senses and it comes not just with physical discomforts but psychological discomforts the things that we think the beliefs that we have the things that disrupt our flow of joy and happiness so i have a picture here of a camera and as i was thinking about what i wanted to present today I was reminded of selfies and some people don't take them because they don't like to take a picture of themselves. And there's lots of reasons that that might occur. So I want you to just take a moment. We're going to find a sensation and you can put in the chat box if it's a positive or a negative or an uncomfortable sensation and maybe expand on what that sensation feels like. Because we all have different perspectives. And so, for example, just to start with me, I loved photography in high school and I had a chance to take many photography classes. And we started, the very first assignment was to make a canned camera out of an old coffee 
10. And I still have that picture. And that was my very first selfie where we actually put the photography paper in the end of the can with the lid on it and it had a little flip on it where it had a pinhole and we call those pinhole cameras. And I remember just absolutely loving to see the process of how a picture was taken or a piece of paper was exposed. So I tease my kids just as a side note that I was taking selfies even before they were called selfies. And so my perspective of selfies starts back there in high school where I learned how to take a picture of myself. So just take a moment here to think about what you do when someone wants to take a picture of you or the sensation or the feeling that you get when you think about taking a selfie. And you can share that in the chat box, positive feeling or a distressful or an uncomfortable feeling because all of us are not the same. Those perspectives that we have on a life experience is not the same. And so as we move forward and we understand that my experience of life and in some circles, it's called the map or the territory. The map isn't the territory. It means what I look at or how I perceive something in the world doesn't mean that it's the territory. It means that it's my perspective. And so as we move through the world, we give grace to people who react adversely to an emotion or an experience and know that there is a reason why they're reacting a certain way, whether they know it or not, whether it was an ancestral trauma that they inherited or an early childhood trauma. So basic building blocks, remember ESP, the emotion, then sensation and physical and psychological discomforts. So we'll be reviewing these strategies, the four, seven, eight breathing plus tapping, butterfly hug, magnet hands, tapping or EFT, which stands for emotional freedom technique. And then we're adding two mindful movements today called mixing fire and water and releasing the steam. They are simple to do and they're simple to teach. The tapping one does take a little bit more education and a little bit more experience. But if you like the thought of tapping out an experience where you want to feel better about something, tapping is a wonderful process. And you can take a whole class on tapping and learn how to bring that into your personal life or your practice. And I would refer you to the tapping solution with Nick Ortner and his sister. And that's an app that can be found online. Or there's tapping in the classroom with Peta Stapleton and she's out of Australia. And you can become certified in tapping in the classroom. It's a d delightful program and it's reasonably priced. So let's go back to our check-in. So before we do any of the strategies, just take a moment to scan from head to toe. Just kind of take some deep breaths and relax into your seat and look inward toward any distress or discomfort that you might have, starting with the head and down the neck and the shoulders. Just kind of feel how you're breathing, if there's any tightness or discomfort. You might feel a strong emotion if something happened recently. You might have an underlying tone of anxiety around the uncertainty at this time. 
So see, just check in, see where there is discomfort, pain, and rate that zero to 10. Zero meaning I'm pretty, un, I'm pretty comfortable. Nothing really is distressful right now. And 10 would be the most distressed or discomfort or intense emotion. So we'll come back to this after we do all of our strategies. So 478 breathing goes like this. We'll all explain it and then we'll do it together. And the tapping points are these. Just underneath the clavicle next to the sternum, you have a special point here. And you can either make a C with your hand and tap both sides, or you can use your hands bilateral or just one. But I use kind of my fingers here and bring the tips all together and that's how I tap. So we'll be inhaling for four counts, patting our chest right at the thymus gland for seven as we hold our breath. And then the third, the exhale, is what I call bump breathing. It looks and sounds like this as we exhale. So 478 can happen without the tapping or with the tapping. We're going to do four breaths with tapping and beginning now, inhaling. Hold it. Pinching the lips together and exhale, bump breathing. And again, inhale, hold it, and exhale. Inhale, hold it. and exhale. Last time, inhale. Hold it. And exhale. stop sharing so that you can see more of me and one big inhale wiggle your toes that's right Lynn I see you smiling again and exhale out through your toes so just for the sake of the video so that you can see me a little bit better when this is on YouTube, is the clavicle points are here. We can make a C and hit both of those points, do bilateral both hands, or just one side, whatever feels comfortable for you. And that's four on the inhale, pat at the thymus for seven, and then bump breathing for exhaling eight. It's so magic, we could call it magic breathing. I also, if I did a master's degree and could do that on 478, I would. I haven't seen a, a study on just 478, but I bet the results would be wonderful. Okay, so the second um, technique is butterfly hugs. And we're going to cross our hands over our body. And this is uh, tapping plus a cross lateral. And we're opening up brain highways and the corpus callosum. And this is just a beautiful, simple, calming breath. And we can just simply inhale. We can tap alternating on the shoulders or we can tap together 
We'll take four deep breaths. And exhale. That discomfort or the emotion that you felt at the beginning, you could think of that as you are self-soothing through butterfly hug. And one more breath. And exhale. Wonderful. So you can do the hands underneath the arms. You can't really see me that well, but you can under the arms and tap under. And when we get to the tapping, you'll see that that's a special point too here. Okay. And so that can be uh, a hug and then a little bit of a tap underneath. Okay. I think we have magic hands next or magnetic hands next. So this is, let's start to rub our hands together. We're becoming aware of kinesthetic sensations that can happen in the body. And we know we get shivers when we're cold and we sweat when we're hot. When we rub our hands together, it brings circulation and warmth. But we can also play with a magnetic feeling so when you're done, just start to sense this movement and kind of a tingling sensation in the hands. And if you want to start to play with that, the hands can feel like magnets pushing up against each other and repelling and also pulling towards each other and slow the breath down and slow the mind down, focusing on just the sensation. We can pull it apart and imagine that the hands want to pull together and then push them together. And we've all at some point with a rubber ducky or a ball in the water, pushed it down in the water and felt how that ball pushes back at our hand. And that is kind of a sensation that we can feel between our hands. So this is a practice that we did do in Tai Chi to develop the energy flow. And this can be directed towards children that just need to take their mind off of something to see if they can feel the magnets in their hands. Good. All right, let's go back to my screen share because I don't have. All right, so we have tapping, mix, fire, and water, and then release steam. The next one is tapping. We're just going to go through the points and please know that this is uh, much bigger than what I'm reviewing today. I'm just skipping superficially and introducing you to tapping so that if it's something that you wish to uh, look at further online, there are sources. Like I said, an app called The Tapping Solution and Tapping in the Classroom with Peta Stapleton, um, both wonderful uh, and you'll get more out of, uh, get deeper into those. So tapping begins and we're hitting points, meridian points along acupuncture, acupuncture meridians and how meridians work is there is energy or chi that flows through the body and the emotions flow through the body. And so when areas get stuck in the body, it's like backs it up 
and causes a little dam. So tapping, if you can imagine, releases those dams um, and stuck points and releases emotions. Okay, so the first point is the karate chop point here. You can use four fingers and we're just gonna tap here. And there's setup, setup statements that um, even though I'm feeling this pain here in my body or this discomfort or uncomfortable feeling, I completely and deeply love and accept myself. And so whatever that discomfort or that emotion that you were feeling at the beginning, just acknowledge that as we tap. Even though I have this uncomfortable feeling or this stress or this distress or this emotion and it's at this number in my body, I completely and deeply love and accept myself. Okay, top of the head. This sensation, this emotion, the middle by the third eye here at the eyebrow, this emotion, this feeling, this distress, around the eye, at the edge of the eyebrow here, this feeling this emotion, this distress. Underneath the eye, right at the edge of the orbit, this emotion, this feeling, this distress. Underneath the nose, this feeling, this sensation, right underneath the mouth on the chin this emotion this feeling this distress that same point when we did four seven eight with tapping right underneath the clavicle this emotion this feeling this distress and then underneath the arm here, right about where the bra line goes. Not quite up in the armpit if you're directing men or boys, but just down on the ribs. And then between the fifth and the fourth metatarsals here, phalanges, right there in the middle. Even though I'm experiencing this pain, this distress, this discomfort, I completely and deeply love and accept myself. And we can hum a little tune. <laughs> we get into one part of our brain and then we're going to count. One, two, three, four, five. Get into the other part of our brain and then hum a little tune again. <laughs> again, building super highways through counting and humming. And big inhale. And a big exhale. Out the toes again. Wiggle the toes. Wonderful. So that's just a very simple um, introduction to tapping. The last two are mixing fire and water and release the steam. And this specifically comes from a Qigong practice called the Eight Brocades. And it is a beautiful practice. And I teach just these individual movement exercises as a way to introduce sensations in the body and moving emotions. So mixing fire and water is here. We're working with the fire of the heart and the water of the abdomen down low by the navel. And we're going to inhale from the navel and inhale up 
and then reach the heart and exhale down. And we'll do that four times. You're gonna go all the way down. You can't see it here in the video, but we're gonna inhale up and exhale down. Nice and slow, inhale. Pause and down. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. See if you can feel some sensations as your hands move up and down and exhale. And last time, inhaling up. Pause at the top and exhale down. So what happens when you mix fire and water? What happens? If fire is underwater, that's right, and it creates steam. And so we've done that in our bodies. We're gonna take and release the steam. The backs of their hands come together and we'll start down low and inhale up and exhale slowly release the steam clearing away all the old and the noxious bring hands palms up back to the middle and backs of the hands together inhaling up and exhale all the way down, palms of the hands together and backs of the hands. We'll do that two more times. Inhale up. This time, imagine exhaling out the fingertips because where the mind goes, the chi follows. The intent goes there, opening up meridians and energy flow through the arms. And last time, inhaling up. And exhale. One more time, we'll do mix fire and water. Inhale up. And exhale. So if a person wanted to do just mixing fire and water, this is the formula. Four mix fire and water, and then a release steam, and a mix fire water. Repeat. So four mix fire and water, and then alternating release steam with mix fire and water. So once you've created, this is the idea, once you've created steam, then you wanna just release the steam and mix fire and water. Release steam, mix fire and water. Release steam, mix fire and water. And you can do, I mean, you can do it how you want, but definitely do four mix fire and water first and then release steam, mix fire and water. You could do that up to 36 times. And that's a beautiful Qigong resiliency building practice that's clearing emotions that get stuck, especially grief and anxiety it goes down the arms and as you exhale out the fingertips your mind and exhaling out the fingertips is so powerful we have no idea but the mind where the mind flows the chi follows that's called yi yi mind or mind intent so super important in breath work Wonderful, Deb Haynes. Yes, Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology. Thank you for sharing that. Um, there is wonderful stuff there. And they take, they, what they've done now, just as a little side note, is 
they now have a great uh, YouTube channel where they break down these um, breath work and you can go to their YouTube channel and get uh, one breath work at a time. And redo our check-in, zero out of 10. Remember that discomfort or that emotion or that pain that you were feeling. We did quite a bit of resiliency building today. And so if you would like to share your beginning number and your end number in the chat box. We just want to see that resiliency building, mindfulness, energy psychology, positive psychology, it all comes together and drops our numbers down. I love to see these numbers, so please share. And lastly, now in the last few minutes that we have is setting ourselves up for success so what are you already doing that you can add some resiliency building to it doesn't have to be a big shift we brush our teeth right we eat breakfast or we eat or we drink or we make shakes or we go to work we get in the car there's lots of stuff that we do that we can set ourselves up for success. Some of you have done some beautiful exercises and scheduled your resiliency building around what you're already doing. And that's a beautiful thing. So don't make it some big to do. If you're whatever you can attach it to that you're already doing that you know that you can give yourself a little reminder on your phone. Some people are setting every two hour alarms with wonderful chime bells. Other people are attaching it to their morning coffee or drinking their shake, whatever works. And know that resiliency building and emo flow is super easy. Check in, do 478, whatever it is that you like to do, reassess, repeat, and do it again until you get the results that you want. And I do want to acknowledge those people who have been here all three sessions. It's been a very trying time. We have never been through this, none of us. It is all new. And we, for, we forget that. We forget that we're in a global pandemic. And now that businesses and life is getting back to normal. For some of us, it does not feel like it's normal. People are, there are a wide spectrum of how people are interpreting the change. And that's okay. We need to recognize where we are and notice what is happening in our own mind and body acknowledging it without judgment, and then choosing to take the steps that we need to, to find some calmness, some joy, some happiness. And as nurses, we tend to reach out, counselors, we can reach out to others because we're all helpers ultimately. And sometimes it's really hard to stop helping others and help ourselves. So please acknowledge the progress that you personally have made in the last three weeks. It might be baby steps, but really just being here, number one, tells me that you want to learn something new and that you have a particular goal or that you're open to something new. So notice and acknowledge those small baby steps. If you've learned how to do four, seven, eight, or you've learned how to do toe breathing and you recognize that at the stoplight, you can wiggle your toes and do toe breathing, that's the beginning of this. It's the begin beginning of a shift, of a shift to be more resilient. And so if you have any last remarks that you'd like to throw out there in the chat box, I'm going to open up the, the line or Sonia, if you would open up the line um, and share any, um, any questions or comments that you felt fitting to share, that would be wonderful. Hi, Wendy. So one of the questions that came through was about a question about coordinating breathing and tapping at the same time. 
and clarification on that came from Christy. Um, the question is about when you are coordinating your breathing and you're tapping, um, are you doing an open hand across your sternum when you're tapping? Mm. Yes, um, thank you. Wonderful. During holding and then on the exhale, are you not tapping? So if you could Good. show the coordination sure. now that we can see your whole body. Sure. <laughs> or so half your body now, more, more of your body. Thank you. So four, seven, eight, um, the tapping on the sternum, I do with an open hand, okay? Either with the, like the middle two fingers is good for me. So it can happen with all four fingers here. And when you do the sternum for the holding, it can be open-handed or it can be a closed fist, whatever works for you. Try them both out because you might like a little bit more how the fist feels as you tap on the sternum here. I don't even, I think I pat. So what works for the breathing and the counting is I can end up counting the taps. So let's do that again. We're going to inhale and do four taps to count four breath or four counts. And then there's a pause. And then open or closed for holding for seven. So I count the pats, okay? And then bump breathing can be here at the sternum or the hand can go down on the abdomen. I just end up leaving it right here and hold this because that's a very soothing touch to the body. And then just bump, breathe eight times. I hope that clarifies that. It makes it a little bit easier if you're counting the taps, the bump and the bumping rather than the counts and not coordinating it up. Good, wonderful question, thank you. Lynn, 10 to 2, tough day. Namaste to you, sweetie. We have days like that, but that's magic. And that just the fact that you got on and said, I need this to do this is really big. So hold your heart and give yourself a heart hug because those 10 days are real. I know those 10 days. Good. Any other questions, Sonia? That was the only question I saw. I saw Anne had mentioned some mindfulness sessions that are coming up starting tomorrow, and she shared the link in there as well. Wonderful. Yes, there is so, so much. There is so much out there. Mm -hmm. Mindfulness for educators, a weekly one, and it's free. That looked good. So it looks like everybody was more relaxed after doing all the exercises. <laughs> so it's a good it's day. It's true. It's true. It's why I do it. And um, Lynn, there are days where a 478 breathing and tapping doesn't calm me down. And um, so as a bit of a, I suppose, a disclaimer that when you need to reach out to someone um, or make a phone call to a professional, it is okay to go there too, because sometimes we cannot self-regulate. And all of this today is self-regulation, isn't it? So sometimes we need to recognize that we need to co-regulate. And so we have our go-to friends and we have helplines and uh, we have telehealth. And with that, remember that there are times when um, this isn't enough. And there are days when we're at, at a 10 and our lid is flipped and we can't calm ourselves down. And I've been there, I know, I know what that feels like. So I'm um, lucky that I, you chose me to come and help 
you co-regulate that Tim. And with that, um, bless you all with all that you are in need of, the light and the colors and the sounds that your, um, your soul needs. Um, it is special that we have each other and I am delighted to and very humble to share with you today what I have been collecting um, and working on over the last 20 years. And with that, namaste, uh, be well. Nurses, you've been wonderful. The compliment is 